Okay, we're going to talk about chemical thermodynamics today. This is chapter 19. Uh, my recommendation, of, of course, is always to read uh, section 19.1, 19.2 to get a further understanding of chemical thermodynamics. We're going to dive right in talking about spontaneous processes. This is a process that uh, proceeds on its own without any outside assistance. So an example of a spontaneous process would be NaCl solid um, being placed in chlorine gas. This reaction will proceed to products spontaneously producing solid sodium chloride. Um, bounce this guy out. And I'm going to have you watch, this, watch a video of this occurring. Um, I'll post this video on Classroom so that you can um, click on it right now. Go click on it. And then, but make sure you come back and, and watch the rest of this video. Now, so this, this would be a reaction we would call spontaneous. Spontaneous. Um, let me give you an example of a reaction that would be non-spontaneous. So if we flipped this reaction over and we had sodium chloride, you know, table salt that you would find in your kitchen, you don't expect it to just spontaneously start decomposing into solid sodium plus chlorine gas. It'd be pretty dangerous if it did, chlorine gas being being um, uh, deadly and sodium being extremely volatile and reacting with water. So this would be considered a non-spontaneous um, reaction, non-spontaneous. Give you a couple of other examples of spontaneous reactions. Um, another one, let's say if we were at 25 degrees Celsius, which room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, um, and we had um, a block of H2O in a solid form, of course, ice. Now we're at 25 degrees Celsius, and we know that the melting point, the melting point for water is zero degrees Celsius. So we're above its melting point at 25 degrees Celsius. So what we're going to expect is we're going to expect over time, we're going to have a nice little puddle of H2O liquid. This would be considered a spontaneous process whatsoever, or, or um, spontaneous process. No, I can't. Let me try that again. This would be considered a spontaneous process because of the temperature that is involved there. And, th and that reaction would not necessarily happen the most rapidly, but it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't, that ice probably wouldn't last very long. Give you another example of a spontaneous process is if we take solid iron. Um, and, and we were to expose it to oxygen gas, what's going to happen in a very slow reaction is this is going to turn into iron 3 oxide, which is also known as rust. So we would expect metal iron to rust over time if, if left out in the elements. And this does happen. This reaction is definitely spontaneous. Um, but it's also very slow. So um, the kinetics of the reaction are, we're not really looking at kinetics of the reaction right now, how fast or slow it's going. We're just looking at whether or not it does happen. And if we wanted to reverse this reaction, that would definitely be non-spontaneous. Rusty metal does not automatically reverse itself. Uh, the next idea I want to talk about is what's called entropy. And this is going to be the, ra the randomness of molecules in a system, the randomness. Um, and we're going to give you some examples so you get a good idea of what entropy is all about. And we use the symbol S for entropy. So uh, when we say delta S, we're talking about change in entropy or how random um, a collection of molecules are becoming or how ordered a collection of molecules are becoming. So I'll give you some examples of this. So once again, using the water example, if we, if we do take some um, H2O solid, and now H2O solid is, we have a uh, ice, we have a very rigid structure. We have a crystal. Um, everything is very ordered. We do have vibrations occurring. These molecules are vibrating as long as they're above absolute zero. Um, but as they start to warm, the molecules start to melt. And they lose um, that, that rigid structure. They're increasing in their vibrations and their rotations of the molecules. And um, then if, if it was hot enough, we're going to form, and those are little water molecules, H2O, in the gaseous form. Now, all of these would be considered, as we're going from the left to the right, we are increasing entropy. We're increasing the randomness of these molecules from the left in this in the, a um, a very solid 
um, crystalline structure and to the right where we have lots of movement and, and spinning molecules and that you're basically moving all over the place. So we're increasing entropy. I'll give you a couple more examples of increasing entropy. Um, let's say we, we take some potassium chloride solid and we place it in water. Now again, potassium chloride ionic bonds holding these two together, um, but they are going to ionize. We place them in water, and they're going to form aqueous solutions. And so this, we could say um, we are increasing what we call disorder, meaning we're going from a solid to ions. Um, the solid being fixed in a crystalline state, potassium and chloride alternating back and forth, into uh, potassium and chloride ions that are just drifting around in the water. We're increasing disorder. Okay. Give you one more one more example of this. And this is a, an example where we're looking at um, moles of gas. And so what we have on our reactant side is we have three moles of gas. And these are, we're breaking bonds and remaking bonds to convert into two moles of gas, of NO2, okay? So essentially, when we have, we have a greater number of moles turning into a lesser number of moles of gas, we are increasing order. We're making it more ordered, okay? Now, what does this have to do with entropy and delta S? So let's talk about the signs of delta S. So um, if we have delta S, the sign of delta S um, is positive, we would say that we are increasing disorder. We are becoming, well, less ordered. And if we have a delta S sign that is negative, we are increasing order. So let's give you some examples of what we mean by this. I think um, if we get these, these four examples, we'll get a pretty good um, feel for what's going on here. So first example, first example, let's take some, we'll take the water example again, H2O liquid turning into H2O gas. What would be the sign for delta H? Oh, excuse me, for delta S. Delta H would be um, would be our enthalpy. We want entropy. Okay. So going from a liquid which um, has a little bit of disorder, but going to a gas which is much more disordered. So we're increasing disorder. And to increase disorder, we say that the sign of delta S is going to be positive. We're becoming more disordered. Let's give you another example. Let's say we have some silver ions in solution plus some chloride ions in solution. And we are going to make some silver chloride precipitate. What would be the sign of delta S? Okay. Now, what we're doing here is we're going from ions that are just floating around into solution um, to something that's very ordered. We're increasing order. So the sign of delta S is going to be negative. I'll give you one more or two more examples. Let's say we have, I think I gave this example a little bit ago, when we have um, iron reacting with oxygen gas to form iron three oxide solid rust. Um, so here we have a solid, obviously, and we have a solid but we also have gas involved. And gases have lots and lots of entropy, lots and lots of disorder. And we're taking those gases and we're locking them up, up into a solid. So this would definitely delta S, delta S is going to become negative, becoming more ordered. And let's give you one more example here, in case we come across something like this. And let's say we have some um, N2 gas, reacting with some O2 gas, and we're turning into 
H2NO gas. Okay, so what's the sign of delta S? Well, so we have gases here, so we have two moles here, and we have two moles here. Bonds have been broken, bonds have been made, made formed. Well, we're going from two to two, so delta S becomes very difficult to, I would say probably close to zero. We'd actually have to do a calculation, which is what we're going to talk about tomorrow, to really get the actual value of delta S, whether it's positive or negative. And that's going to end our talk today about entropy and disorder.